let's learn a little bit about ecology. We're just starting a new unit and we need to know the basics. So ecology, if you break that word apart, eco means home. Logi means the study of. So therefore, ecology is the study of the interactions between organisms and their environment. So it's really studying living things and where they live, their homes, studying their homes. Biosphere, let's break that apart. Bio means life, sphere means kind of like a ball, therefore, Biosphere is where all life exists on Earth. Earth is that sphere. So when we look at the biosphere and where all life lives, it's very a very thin area. It's eight kilometers above Earth to 11 kilometers below the surface of the ocean. Think about that. If you were to take a basketball and dunk it underwater and then pull it up really fast, that film of water on the outside, that's in comparison to the world, how, how much space, just that water on that basketball, is the space that all life is on Earth. That's not a lot. And it's fragile. You guys know that. So we like to organize things in science and we organize the ecological levels in the following way. We start out with individual organisms and we say individual organisms combined together make a population if they're the same. If you take different populations and put them together they become a community. A community along with the abiotic factors becomes an ecosystem. If you take a lot of ecosystems and put them together, they become a biome. And all the biomes in the world make up the biosphere. So they start out with an individual organism and then move their way up the chain. So let's look at each one. So an individual organism, here's a zebra. And by itself, it's just an organism. But if you put a bunch of them together, you have a population. And what if you put some populations together? So here we've got zebra and we've got wildebeest. And what are those together? Those are called a community. You could even say the grass is a population if it's all one kind of grass because it's a living thing. Okay, now we have to learn what biotic and abiotic means. Biotic, the left side of the picture, is showing living things, living factors in an ecosystem. So you can see that top left is an amoeba. That's a living thing. We've got animals, we've got people, we've got plants, and that would be bacteria. Now that is biotic. So bio means life. But if you put an A in front of it, A, biotic on the right side of the picture. When you add a to the beginning of a word, it means without. So abiotic means without life. And that's all the stuff in a system that is not alive and never was. So look at this. We've got mountains and earth. We've got water. 
we've got wind, temperature, and volcanic gases. Okay, none of those were alive and they never will be. Those are abiotic factors, non living factors in the ecosystem. Okay, so when we add those abiotic factors, like the water in this pond, the ground, the clouds, the sunlight, what do we call this whole system then? That would be an ecosystem. It's made up of biotic and abiotic factors that interact with each other. Now, don't ever forget the sun is the main source of energy for life on Earth. We're going to go into this many, many times throughout the year. The sun is the main source of energy for life on Earth. If we didn't have the sun, we would not survive. Okay, let's stop, answer a couple of questions, and then you're going to come back to the video after you've answered questions, and then we'll continue. Pause it. Okay, you're back. Here we go. So producers and autotrophs, those are the same thing. We sometimes call them producers. We sometimes call them autotrophs. Um, don't get confused. We interchange them. Just make sure you know what each word means. What they mean is that they produce their own food using either the sun or chemicals around them. So are we humans autotrophs or producers? And or, I should say. I mean, we make our own food, right? We go in the kitchen and cook. That's not what we're talking about. So what we're talking about is their actual body creates food for themselves using the sun or chemicals around them. So here is a fern. This fern takes the sun and it makes its own energy source, its own food source. The next one, that's duckweed in a pond. Duckweed also takes the sun's energy and makes its own food. This next thing is called a tube worm. That is found way down in the really deepest part of the ocean. Um, and these things, they're about, they can be like six feet tall and approximately, oh, six to six inches wide. So it's like a big long tube. And it was thought that way deep down in the ocean, no sunlight could get down there. And that's true, no sunlight can get down there, but why is there living things down there um, if we need that sun to produce food? Well, these guys are called chemosynthetic. That means they take the chemicals that are around them and they make their own food using those chemicals. So these tube worms are living way down next to underwater volcanoes. And those volcanoes spew out chemicals. And then these guys soak in the chemicals and make food for themselves. If you want to look up tube worms and learn about them, that is a great one to find videos on. Okay, heterotroph versus, or I'm sorry, heterotroph slash consumers. Those are the same things. We just use those words interchangeably, interchangeably. And what they mean is they have to search out their food. They can't just make it 
in their bodies. They have to, like worms, dig around and eat something different. Bears, they have to eat berries, maybe even animals. Owls need to search out rodents, maybe some other things too. Um, mushrooms, that's a fungus. Those consume dead things like um, dead trees. If you have a tree die or the bark is dying, a fungus can grow on it and it releases little toxins into the dead thing and then it turns it into liquid and they soak the liquid up. They do not grow using the sun's energy like a producer would. Those are consumers. And then insects. Here we have a caterpillar. It has to it has to actually eat leaves to make its own or to find food. Okay, so here's a little funny. The sun is looking down and the plant's saying, look, I made this. I made sugars, which means it's making its own food. He's very proud of himself and oh. So the top is a autotroph, making its own food. Bottom, heterotroph, eating food. Okay, primary consumers. They eat producers. Primary means the original. So primary means the first. The first consumer eats producers, meaning it eats plants. There's a grasshopper. The next thing up the chain is a secondary consumer. It eats the primary consumers. So what would eat a grasshopper? A skunk. Did you know that? Skunks eat a lot of bugs. Okay, so now we go up. Does anything eat a skunk? Well, a tertiary consumer would. They eat the secondary consumers. So what might eat a skunk? An owl. Did you know that? Okay, so remember those words. Primary means first. Secondary, second. Tertiary means third. All right, again, let's stop, answer some more questions, and then you can come back. Okay, now that you've unpaused it, here we go. All right, there are trophic levels in the systems. Each step in a food chain or food web or food pyramid is called a trophic level. So on the left is a food chain. It just shows one direction that the energy is being passed through. So we start with the plant. That's the first trophic level and it's a primary producer. You guys know what that is. The next one is an herbivore. An herbivore eats plants. It's also a primary consumer, which eats producers. And that's the second trophic level. Then we've got the mouse. It is another word for, for it would be carnivore because it's eating an animal. It is a secondary consumer because it's eating something that eats plants. And it is a third trophic level. On the fourth trophic level, the tertiary consumer, remember the third consumer, it eats an animal that eats another insect or animal, which eats the producer. And then the very top here, quaternary consumer, that's the fourth level, fourth consumer level, but fifth trophic level. 
So that bird eats a snake, which ate a mouse, which ate a grasshopper, which ate a plant. Okay, now notice the arrows point to, to the actual eater and shows the transfer of energy. So here we've got an arrow going into the grasshopper because the food is going into the grasshopper. The grasshopper's energy goes into the mouse. The mouse's energy goes into the snake and so forth. So that's a food chain. It's just one long line. But really in life, we deal with food webs because you don't know what's going to eat what. It's not always going to be the same. And this is where the arrows start going every which direction like a spider web. So at the bottom, you've got an, a rabbit, it looks like, and it's got an arrow coming from the plant into the rabbit. The plant also goes into the deer. The plant also goes into the grasshopper. The grasshopper then goes into the bird or into the mouse. Okay, you can see how this works. So if I take and go from here, whoops, we'll start here, starting with the grass. This is the producer. And then we've got a primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and then we stop because nobody's eating the fox, it looks like. Oh, not sure what that is. It's so small. Something's eating that fox, it looks like, because the energy is going from the fox into it. Okay. All right, the next thing, the ecological pyramid. Okay, so in this pyramid, you'll notice only 10% of the energy actually transfers to the next level. So this first level, we've got this grass, primary producer. When these bugs or animals eat that primary consumer, I'm sorry, primary producer, the grass, only 10% of its actual energy that's in it gets transferred into this level. The reason is because the transfer, it takes energy itself to happen. So a lot of this energy that was in here is being used to metabolize it. And it is given off as heat. The majority, 90%, almost 90%, of this energy from this lower level is given off as heat. Same with up here. This guy eats these guys and it really only uses 10% of that energy, but 90% is given off as heat again. Okay, so there is the next piece, lots of heat going off. And remember decomposers, that is where the mushroom is. We've got lots of these, all of these are gonna be consumed once they die by the decomposers. So it's like bacteria, it's mushrooms, anything like that, that just kind of turns stuff into mush and puts it back into the ecosystem. Oops. Okay. So the next thing you do, you get to answer the rest of the questions and you are done. Have a wonderful day.